Hello, everyone. My name is Victoria Tori Setian, Design Director at Xbox. And I'm Grace Rojas, Narrative Designer and Historian on Aura. Welcome to the Encarta series for Aura History Untold. In this series, we'll dive into the Encarta, our in-game encyclopedia, to uncover the rich histories, legendary leaders, and unique gameplay mechanics of each nation. I can't wait to get started, Tori. So which nation are we exploring first? We're starting with the cradle of Western civilization, Greece. Let's jump in. Ancient Greece, also known as the Hellenic Republic, is most often known for its rich history and popular mythology. Throughout its history, ancient Greece found themselves in conflict with different groups like Persia and Rome, and also witnessed internal conflicts among varying city-states like Athens and Sparta. At its height, Ancient Greece greatly developed its Hellenistic culture, which included some remarkable achievements in politics, art, philosophy, science, and education. It's not surprising that the often imitated but never duplicated Ancient Greece was home to some of the most powerful and brilliant minds of the ancient world, including the poet Sappho. To represent Greece, Ara History Untold is spotlighting the poetess Sappho as their leader. Sappho was born around the 7th century BCE, hailing from the Greek colony of the island of Lesbos. Not a lot is known about Sappho's life, but legend says that she met her demise by jumping to her death from a cliff due to unrequited love. Others say she may have actually lived to a ripe old age, but most of the records and histories of the day have vanished, along with most of Sappho's poems, adding to her mythic status. During her life, Sappho was one of the most admired poets in the Greek world. Her works were famous for their sensuality, expressing love and desire, her poems were meant to be sung, accompanied by lyre. They were melodic and complex with intricate meters, and her successors regarded her as the greatest lyric poet of her time. While only a few fragments of her work have survived, the poem's passion and beauty still have the power to move one and have greatly influenced and served as inspiration for writers from across the world. Sappho's abilities play into Grace's extensive seafaring. Coastal regions, boosting your city productivity, means that you can grow coastal cities into lucrative, wealth-producing machines. Sappho is very good at increasing her citizen stats and entering golden ages. Her leader trait, 10th Muse, makes it easy to keep her people happy and prosperous. Coupled with her minor trait, Charismatic, this ensures that golden ages happen more frequently for Sappho. Not only that, but her golden ages are an opportunity for her to score a ton of prestige. Her other minor trait, Creative, coupled with the 10th Muse bonus to the masterpiece creation rate of amphitheaters and theaters means she can pump out great works of books and music faster and more efficiently than her adversaries. Her final minor trait, Innovative, gives her capital a modest research boost, meaning that players can either unlock building her bonus improvements much earlier than expected, or they can play on a wider scale by unlocking more techs each tech era without falling behind the other nations. Lastly, Amphitheaters and theaters are not cheap and require quite a bit of gold maintenance. This is where Sappho's boost to prosperity truly shines. More prosperous citizens means more tax income, meaning more amphitheaters, happiness, and prestige. Sappho's abilities can be strongly complemented by both the Colosseum and the Colossus of Rights. The Colosseum provides a boost to prosperity and happiness in all of your cities. The Colossus, meanwhile, will allow Sappho to create a mighty navy in her defense by boosting the rate at which ships are crafted at docks and boosting her total number of naval armies. Finally, let's talk government. Republic governments are what Greece is perhaps best known for. In-game, each government provides the player's nation with a special effect and then a choice of one of three bonus effects called policies. Republic increases the knowledge in all cities, which keeps her citizen stats up and helps with unlocking research quickly. Each of the optional policies available from the Republic government provides a powerful boost that Sappho can utilize. It's up to the player what matters most for their specific playstyle or even their in-the-moment needs. Policy 1 boosts the likelihood of artists, activists, scientists, and writers appearing in her nation, meaning she will have more paragons to help create masterpieces or help run the government as advisors. Policy 2 boosts the rate at which cities can build government, science, and culture buildings. With this policy, she can quickly turn any of her cities into an organized center of culture and science. Finally, Policy 3 simply boosts the happiness of all cities. There's no clever play here. 
More happiness means more productivity and more golden ages, increasing the prosperity of Greece and ensuring that the citizens are happy with your rule. The Republic government allows for a cap of six cities. While not the highest city cap available from governments, it's tied with a few for second highest. Sappho players should be cautious with their expansion and focus on quality over quantity. However, once Greece's core economy truly gets rolling, a republic will allow further expansion and even more prestige. Thank you everyone for watching and a big shout out to Emily from the Oxide team for her amazing contributions to today's video. Be sure to subscribe for future Encarta episodes and let us know in the comments which nations you'd like to see featured. Follow us on the social platforms of your choice. Join the Insider Program at arahistoryuntold.com, wishlist Ara History Untold on Steam, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.